Stagnation, welcome back to the channel. Champions. We know for that we'll do. We're going to bring up our guest to join us here. At the Stagnation Virtual Headquarters. Let's go <laughs> <laughs> all the way. Okay. So we know for that we'll do. Who we are looking at here is the first family of Bitcoin. Okay. They joined the space during the days of Cow World. During the cowboy days of Bitcoin and paper wallets. Mm, tell them. Yes, it sounds like this was the times when <laughs> mining was still done on the laptop. Hey, yo. Their motto is to create a family legacy with Bitcoin and implement a Bitcoin mindset into their progeny into perpetuity. Damn, there's some strong English right there, man. Listen, man. They introduced Bitcoin to fiat audiences across, um, well, over the Feder radio station for Wealth Wednesdays for two years. Two years in a row. That's why you talk putting in, that's why you call putting in work on the mm, ground. Oh, God, the top. Yes, battle scars, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, they joined the Gentlemen of Crypto Network in 2022, currently with over 100 shows recorded. That is no easy feat. Ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, okay, let's welcome Aaron and Simon. With Ooh. Simon Family Investments Ooh. and Ventures. Hi, everybody. How Thank was that so one? How was that intro? Us. I loved yeah. it. You did it like you wrote it. I loved it. <laughs> Listen, it was in one breath. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> no, I get, uh, so glad to have you uh, have you all on the show. How are you guys so we're doing? We're happy to be here. Yes, we are. We are very happy to be here. Incredible. Double up. Take it away, sir. What 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 are we talking about today? Uh, you know, we just want to get on the show and just talk about. Imagine couples, right? They say if you're gonna go far in the world of Bitcoin, mm. if you don't have the right partner, man, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> and we we'll see you guys yeah. kicking butts. Literally 200 shows yeah. on the gentleman of crypto every week. Even through the entire beer market, not just one beer market, a couple of them yes. <laughs> for yes. the longest. Uh, and you just keep, I don't want to call it chilling, but getting the world out there, educating people about what's going on in the space and what our community should be looking out for. And we just wanted to just bring you guys on the show to, to talk more about that and just get people to notice you and, uh, and identify that, you know, there are people out here doing the work. And it's not just, oh, you got to do it by yourself or you can do it together as a team. So yeah, man, tell us tell tell us a little bit about Sim uh, Simon Family Investment Ventures and how you guys got into the old Bitcoin space. Well, um, I got into it. Uh, well, it would have been twenty fourteen or twenty fifteen. <laughs> the cowboy days. Uh, cowboy days. Um, mm -hmm. Fishing boat accidents. About, I had heard a lot about Bitcoin, but I had a friend that I went to that I was in the military with. Um, shout out to him. His last name is Justin Vandermeer. And he was a real tech guy. And he he sent me an email. He said, man, you got to get into this Bitcoin. And I said, okay, okay, let me look in it. Let me check it out. Because he, I mean, uh, it would be funny not to run it back, but he was the first one who told me about iPhone 1. <laughs> way before it came out. And I'm like, oh. yeah. I still had a, you know, you know, flip phone. He was telling me, man, this iPhone's gonna no, be able to do this and do that. Yet. Yeah, but he told me and I didn't know about it. And then when it came out, I was like, damn, he was right. Mm -hmm. So then when he told me about Bitcoin, I said, okay, let me listen to him. And um, like I said, he sent me a little bit of Bitcoin and that's how I got started. Like she said, the cowboy days and uh, paper wallets and all this stuff. Um, it, it was, uh, it was sketchy back then, and we didn't put too much money into it because we still mm -hmm. were a big um, mm -hmm. gold and silver investors, big in the stock market and the FANG stocks, mm -hmm. and um, uh, Facebook, <laughs> Apple, uh, Amazon, Netflix, mm -hmm. Netflix and Google. Yeah. Uh, that's where we started back then. And then I started telling her about it mm -hmm. because she was like, okay, Bitcoin, what is this? Is this some kind of you know, weird money? And I had to do more research and more research and more research. So what, what yeah. did you do that you felt like helped you? You were like, you were like, honey, you're throwing a lot of our money into that Bitcoin stuff, man. I yeah. didn't know no, about I didn't it. Know, <laughs> I didn't know what it was. And you, you, you kind of started hearing about it, but at the time it, it just felt like nobody really knew what it was at the mm. time um when he has an idea about something he has a really good track record uh for his ideas 
So he's just like, you know, just kind of ride with me, just kind of learn about it. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, though, this was all Simon, right? So Simon right. was the one who was going around talking to people about it and stuff like that. And then there, he's, he also homeschools our children. So yeah. he's the educator in the house as well. So I've you seen can kind of see how this falls perfectly within his personality. And he wanted to start teaching me about the markets. Uh, he's also trade. So yeah. not that he was teaching me how to trade so that I can trade, but just it's a skill you can have. It's just something you can learn. And in addition to that, that's when he really started going hard with me with Bitcoin. And we would have these great, fantastic, you know, periods during the day where it was like um like a mentor, mentee, kind of teacher, student kind of sessions. And I said to him, I said, I think it would be beneficial if we just recorded our sessions. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So other people can learn. Mm -hmm. And that evolved into us doing it together. We ended up on a radio station called acrossthefader.com. That audience was primarily fiat, a fiat audience. So mm -hmm. they really want to learn how to build their credit. They want to learn how to use credit responsibly, how yeah. to get business loans, business lines of credit, real estate, yeah. real estate yeah. right? They were uh, traditional finance. They were a traditional mm -hmm. finance audience. And yeah. Simon and I decided to take our mentor mentee sessions to the radio station which is owned by my cousin, uh, Richard Davis. Um, his name is also Bless. It's not King Bless, but it's Bless. Right. Shout out to Bless. <laughs> and yeah. we did that for two years, and we saw a significant amount of movement. Right? We saw right. a lot of adoption. We saw a lot of changed behavior, changed mindset, perspective changes, shifts in people's right. lifestyle. And along the way, we ran into Zay and King Bless. We went to El Salvador. Yeah, was that El Salvador? Yeah. Ooh, how was that? Boots on the how was El Salvador? Excellent experience. Bitcoin Beach. Yeah. Excellent experience. It is okay. an environment that's all Bitcoin all the time. And you're not used to that. Mm -hmm. mm. You know Holy what God. I mean? So you're yeah. going into this beautiful egregor and mindset and thought cloud of Bitcoin. Yep. And it was a very refreshing, uh, it was an exciting, it was learning. Um, yeah. We live in Mexico, so we're already familiar yeah. with the local, you know, the local environmental culture. Mm -hmm. But yeah. just to see how hard uh, President Bukele went in the education process, you'll see little tiendas with the Bitcoin um, yeah. emblem, you know, in their windows nice. and all they sell is <laughs> candy and fruit. But it's just yeah. amazing, you know. So we had that great experience. And Zay was like, yo, we need you. We need you guys to hop on again. So that was the second show we did with Zay and King Bless. Yeah. And then after that show was over, they contacted us like, we need you on our network. We love what you guys do, and that's when we turn into your content cousins. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> hey, you know, and amazing shows it is, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, that, that actually speaking of the um, that feeling you had when you went to uh, El Salvador, I'm going to circle back to that later on uh, because I actually have a question about meditations, okay. which we'll get to down the line. Okay. Yeah. Double up. So I was listening to your introduction, right? And I, I spend a lot of time with some of your live shows uh, through the entire BM markets. And I know you guys follow us too as well. And yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, you are ex-military, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I want to go from this angle because sometimes when we talk about Bitcoin on the show, I have a feeling that people think that Bitcoiners are like anti-American. And I'm like, the person that introduced you to Bitcoin is actually in the military. Bitcoin is not anti-America, which is as American as possible as, you know, as it can be. Can you talk to us about how the military feels about Bitcoin and how you guys are taking that going forward from that angle? Yeah, go ahead. So <clears throat> it's, we don't have the mass adoption 
that I feel we should have as far as military uh, persons go. And it's for a lot of different reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, so we are, we're prior service, meaning that we served mm -hmm. our time and mm -hmm. we feel, fulfilled our contracts and we're yeah. now civilians again. However, the, the demographic of the military right now, I'm going to call it like top heavy as far as age goes. Mm -hmm. So there's more personnel that are older than there are that are younger. And we do understand that right now where Bitcoin is, it's really gonna be picked up, that adoption's really gonna go far with the younger generations. But for the military personnel, just because that's military personnel personality, who do have Bitcoin, they go hard with it, right? Gotcha. A lot of them that we know personally are Bitcoin maxis. Yeah. They have the discipline and that mindset that we have been starting to like see and to kind of, in a sense, like realize that Bitcoin also comes with a, a very interesting mindset. Mm -hmm. And the, the core to that mindset is discipline. And I think that's a great thing. And I think that's something that we in the Bitcoin community should really like push, especially for people who are wanting to get their lives together, who sure. want to tighten up who want to up level, who want to mm, get to yeah. that next level. I think Bitcoin is a great start for that. Yeah. And uh, because of the discipline that she spoke of, you know, you have uh, have to have discipline as far as uh, military personnel. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an alternative way. No, I want to say alternative. It's a it's a way to add on as far as military personnel. That's part of the discipline. Yep. Yeah. Yes. And so it's a way to add on to their retirement as well. Mm -hmm, to because supplement that income. yeah, you want to supplement that retirement. So we speak to some military personnel uh, who have been there a little bit longer. Yes. And they are adding that on to their retirement. Yes. And mm -hmm. so that is what you know from the people we can speak to. You know, we can't speak to, but. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they uh they love it. They love it. That's why we talk to them. We talk to them. Hey, you gotta grab some Bitcoin. You sit down, tell them what it is. You know, you don't have to go all in, but just put a little to the side. And we speak yeah. about different ways how you can dollar cost average. Just to, you know, like we I call it chopping wood. You know, mm -hmm. chopping yeah. wood. A little bit, 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 and yeah. it build up. How do you call it? Little dutty dutty. So, <laughs> that's, that's, that's big damn. so just a little yeah. bit of dirt, just a little bit of dirt, yeah. and then yeah. you yeah. yeah. Piles up. <laughs> you have a whole highland by the time you're done. Mm -hmm. that is, that is that, that's but the tall. other thing, military-wise, yeah. and this is an important thing, mm -hmm. I don't know if civilians know this, but in the military, along with the discipline comes with, if you don't pay your bills, your, like, the utilities that you have, the, yeah. the people that you, the, the banks that you use to pay your car notes, they know that they can call and tell on you mm -hmm. if you're not paying your bills and you get in big, big trouble, right? It's a very mm -hmm. serious thing. You can lose stripes, right? So not only am I not paying my bills on time, y'all are going to take a strike and I'm mm -hmm. going to have a loss in pay. Mm -hmm. so that sounds like China. It's, yeah, because <laughs> it's a way... Yeah. Um, it's a way to strengthen your purchasing power, especially mm. in our cur current economy. Yeah. It is very attractive, like I said, to some of the younger people yeah. who understand like, oh, if I get in this, I don't have to worry about yeah. falling behind on my bills. I don't have to worry about losing a strike. I don't have to worry about not being eligible for promotion. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about when your military is, how can I promote? So Bitcoin has a variety of, fantastic benefits for any and every lifestyle but especially mm. military so I was, I was thinking that with all the traveling that military personnel do mm -hmm. and you have to spend money every country that you go to absolutely and i'm sure you guys also follow jason larry and it talks about bitcoin as a force of national security mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those are two different angles that i think mil the military should be looking at it from Absolutely. Like I'm sure the federal government spends a lot of money trying to move money across the entire globe to yeah. pay their personnel. Like the easiest solution right there is boom, Bitcoin. But for mm -hmm. some reason, they don't get it. 
I'm sure the probably the reason why they don't get it is because of the banks. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna say this, and um, <clears throat> I hope I don't regret saying it, but I'm gonna just tell the truth, shame the devil. There we go. Because our government has a magical checkbook, they treat it like children who have rich parents. There's no value to the money. So when you start looking at federal spending, yes, they're going to pay $1,020 for a toilet seat that costs $32 at Home Depot. Mm -hmm. They don't really have a, um, and you notice by their actions, by their demonstrations, they don't care, right? Mm -hmm. If it costs this amount to move the money, who cares? It's not our money, it's your money that we're wasting. Yeah. It's your money well, that we dollars. don't have a value for. But that's how they treat yeah. it. Yeah, and it's tax dollars. And it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the defense budget the highest yes. budget it is. on the ledger? It's the highest budget on the ledger. It's yeah. one of the highest <laughs> fiscal budgets if you look at it, um, comparisons globally. Mm-hmm. And again, it's because their idea is not my money I'm spending, it's yours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is where you know, there's a lot of these things that are in place, mm-hmm. which is supposed to be a structure of society. And, you know, I'll give credit where it's due. This, the, the structure of the financial system so far has carried us up to where we are. Yes. Mm-hmm. However, they say you don't know what you don't know, right? So people could feel like everything is okay if you do not know you're getting scammed. Right. If from the moment you're born, you're born into this reality of scam, yes. right? Then you don't even know it's a scam. This is just the way the system works. You get good and at right, it. <laughs> right. And the reason I bring this up is because, you know, like how you explain there, you know, these people have this magic checkbook yes, where they can essentially just create money out of nowhere. And then you are expected to pay that money, mm-hmm. but you never got into an agreement to spend that kind of money. Right. with your government right so i don't know if we'll call it theft or yes we're gonna slavery, call it theft. right because at the same time it's like if someone is if you're working and giving someone all of your value yes. and this person is spending your value faster than you can even generate it yes. to the point where now your future generations are now automatically caught into paying this debt Ah, slavery that's what you call that it seems to me that a bunch of people have configured a situation where they can print money extort other areas of the world in order to get the materials to build this force we'll call it that right which they can use to suppress or exert this force on anyone and then now everyone in that environment is working and paying for things that they do not agree to pay for and paying for things that they don't even know who they're paying it back to. But it is very certain that there's a group of people that don't need to work or do anything. They just need to wake up and you pay taxes and they can go on with their lives. And their legacies as well. Exactly. It seems like it's all, (laughs) it all feels stolen to me at the expense of other people. Would you, would you, um, say this analysis that I'm giving here is sort of on track with the reality we're living in? I think it's absolutely accurate and it's probably the most concise and accurate way to tie it all together that I've Mm. ever heard. Simon and I recently did a show where we discussed it was the 1% Mm -hmm. have stolen $50 trillion from the 99% since was it the 1950s babe yeah it was pretty back then and it's a time magazine article done by two economic scientists yeah and that's how the system's set up so when you hear the jamie diamonds of the world and all of these other leaders of the world criminalize Mm -hmm. bitcoin and demonize bitcoin Mm -hmm. it's because bitcoin's blockchain technology real-time ledger everything's transparent we, yep. There's no backdoor deals. There's no under mm-hmm. the table dealing. Mm-hmm. Everything is accounted for. We can see everything that's happening, and they hate that. Yeah, they do. And I wanted to just uh, circle back to what he was speaking about. Um, it's a something that's out there. They call it time theft. 
And yeah. I'm sure you guys are uh, familiar with that. I, I learned about it from a gentleman named Robert Breedlove. Mm -hmm. And um, he did a great breakdown on time theft and how the U.S. dollar losing value is uh, stealing your time as you mm -hmm. are trading your time for the U.S. dollar. And that's why we always talk about you know, locking up the value that you have from. So if you put it in Bitcoin, you can move it across space and time and not yeah. you know lose value as you are just keeping fiat currency mm -hmm. yeah I'll, i will tell you how i see that time theft as well mm -hmm. imagine that you are working you know working your ass off you're like you know what i am planning to buy a house mm -hmm. three years from today you worked you saved and it's now three years you have the money that you were planning you hit all your goals and you have an idea of the type of house you want to buy, where you want it to be. And then you show up and you can no longer afford that house because of inflation. Yeah. If you want that same house, you now have to spend more time working for a new target to be able mm -hmm. to afford the same thing. And it's an ever moving target. And that's the problem. Yes. Exactly. Higher, higher, higher interest rates <laughs> make the banks richer. Yeah. But now, and, and I wanted to come back to the banks here, but I'm going to segue now to these meditations. I told you, I have something to ask about your meditations from the other day. How did I know you guys were meditating? <laughs> right? But in this meditation, right, you were meditating uh, the classes or a class separation that Bitcoin is creating. And the reason I think this is important because if we all agree to the things that we were just discussed here, mm. But we're being robbed in seven different ways that we don't even know. <laughs> Why is it gotta be seven? I mean, you know, more than seven. <laughs> more than seven. <laughs> <laughs> they take the seven and, <laughs> and multiply it by something, right? Um, but if if we know this as a people, then at that point you can only say there's only two things that can happen. Mm -hmm. You either accept that you like being scammed and you don't <laughs> you cannot do anything about it, okay. right? And then you keep going on with the way the system is. Mm -hmm. But anyone that has, you know, some sort of integrity, right? Some sort of respect for themselves will be hey, will go, hey, no, this is not correct. We need to change this. Wait right? a minute. And that's now where I think that, and these two areas, these two groups that I've explained here is a reality. This exists, right? Mm -hmm. There are people like that. We we'll talk to them every day. So that brings us now to one of your recent meditations about this Bitcoin class versus mm -hmm. The shitcoin class. We're not going to call it shitcoin class because we know we're well, more non-coiners <laughs> than the non-coiners. Because all right? coins are all coins, and they do they are tethered to Bitcoin. But yeah. we were really more talking about non-coiners. So your fiat class. Yes, that's the fiat class, definitely. That's uh, that's at least that's how I interpreted it in my you know the, the you know the old coiners are you know there's a there's a different range. It's like a spider. You have to deal with it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because um, but but um. I think I'm just referring here now to the fiat group versus the Bitcoin group, right? Um, what made you guys think of this? And I guess, do you think, how do you envision this unfolding? Because obviously there are going to be people that um, will continue moving on with this um, mindset. I just wanted to get your thoughts on this fiat mindset versus Bitcoin mindset and how you see that playing out. Um, as these two groups exist in society. So with that, when Simon and I were meditating on that, it's really yeah. come from a revelation that mm -hmm. we were beginning to notice. But on the surface level, Simon and I, we did, I think, two shows, and we need to do another one. It's on neuro, it's on um, neuroeconomics. Neuro it was neuroeconomics. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. understanding our physiological makeup our brains are incredible supercomputers, right? Mm -hmm. However, in order to learn something new, mm -hmm. your brain has to perform a physical work. So it's like proof of work. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. the proof of work, and this is true, right? Yeah. Your, your brain will create what's called a neural pathway. When you mm -hmm. learn something new, mm -hmm. there is an electronic transaction that happens yeah. in your brain that creates a groove. That's why your brain kind of mm -hmm. looks like dry ramen noodles. 
Yep. Yeah. And the more it, yeah. you learn it, the deeper mm -hmm. that groove becomes. But your mm -hmm. body understands that to be a physical work. Mm -hmm. Responsibility is a physical work. Mm -hmm. Accountability is a physical work. Yep. Right? right? So you have a class of people who are willing to take on as much responsibility as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to call them the Bitcoin class, the Bitcoin mindset. From the time they wake up in the morning to the time they go to sleep at night, they are working on ways to sharpen the swords in their life portfolio, whether it be mm -hmm. financial, professional, yeah. personal, health, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to always be the 80-20 rule, power law rule. 20% right. right. of the people are going to do 80% of the work. Yeah. Yep. And 80% of the people are only going to do 20% of the work. The power yeah. laws. Yeah. Power laws. Yeah. So yeah. your non, your non-coiners, your fiat class, a lot of them, let's be honest, they don't want the responsibility, accountability, obligation, or the work that's involved with bettering their lives not just for themselves, but to do the amount of work needed yeah. for their next generation and the generation after that mm -hmm. to be able to benefit from it. You hear a lot of them just in their conversational speak, like, I got mine. You got a big squeeze. Yeah. So unfortunately, Bitcoin, which is going to reflect the class that mm -hmm. participates in it, it's going to be a small group of people, just like we only have 21 million Bitcoin ever. It's ultimate scarcity. It's sound money. It's optimal gold. You're just going to have a small group of people who are going to have the mindset reflected by this optimal commodity, optimal asset. And the world's always worked that way, unfortunately. It's always been like that. If life is a lesson, you understand that the the your your top percenters, your magna cum laude, your summa cum laude. Yeah, it's good. only gonna be one or two people. Only one person can be magna cum laude. Right. Only one yeah. person can be summa cum laude. You can only have ten people in the top ten out of it could be a hundred, a thousand, a million, a billion, right? A trillion. But you're always just gonna have a small class of people who are willing to create the mindset work at it and bring that to fruition and those are the people those are the movers and shakers those are the people you see get shit done and you know how this uh, complains you, you know they say history rhymes so at the creation of fiat mm -hmm. right did you know that exactly what you're saying was also what happened during that time there's only a very small group of people that know how money works yes mm -hmm. To, to this the point day, that it's a very small group of people who understand how our monetary policy works. Yeah. They know it so well that they hijacked it and they, they stole did. everybody's time and wealth. They did. But with Bitcoin, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. And that's why they hate it. Boom. It's incredible. It almost sounds like Bitcoins bring out the leaders in people. Yeah. Yes. Or the leader in people. I think if you have it in you, it would definitely... um magnify yeah yeah because it almost seems like i've never come across anything uh personally in my life that forced me to become better at everything that i want to know it's uh it it reshapes your habits we were speaking to uh is it jimo this morning yeah jimo yeah and he was talking about how one of the things that bitcoin forces you to do is to be disciplined and it takes this whole mindset change mm -hmm. and you guys you know pretty much use the same words mm -hmm. uh, that he used this morning so for me personally i think that is just something that is so incredible so phenomenal i don't even know if we um as a society we really appreciate what we are looking at uh, yep. very much enough just because of all the you know all the the use cases like you said, you know, when you describe when you describe the situation with how someone in the military can use Bitcoin, you know, to just keep ensuring that at least financially things are always buffing up. 
that is a use case I, I would I never thought about that. Mm-hmm. And I cannot even think about it because I've never been in that situation. Right. right? Um, but then we we speak to someone like Jimo this morning mm-hmm. and he talks about how, you know, for him, he's back in Ghana, he's finished school, not been able to find a job for a long time. And then he's, he starts using uh, this peer-to-peer uh, Bitcoin trading website. And it's essentially like you're doing Forex with Bitcoin. And just like that, he was able to start making a lot of money. He actually started getting paid in Bitcoin initially. But it's just um, something that, I don't know, it's like an octopus of some sort, <laughs> right? That like it's able to kind of take on everything. And it reflects in the people as well. Yeah. You know, homeschooling is something that, mm-hmm. um, you know, a lot of people talk about it, but they don't. Really, I don't really see them jump into it and actually get it done. You've been talking about this for a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've been, I mean, I've been talking about this. I was like, dude, it does not make sense to send your kids to school, man, because it's like at this point in time, you know, if you look at the environment around you, it is so corrupted. How do you expect to win? You know, right. it's like you jump into a pit with snakes and then you just hope that one is not venomous. But then I see you doing it <laughs> when I, you know, I went onto your channel. Um, and I, I saw Simon and the kids all, you know, getting some learning done. And just the level of one thing I'll point out is the level, especially your youngest, right? The youngest song that uh, mm-hmm. the level at which he's um, reading, mm-hmm. absorbing the knowledge and absorbing knowledge, right? You especially when it comes to things like chemistry, yeah. it is out of this world. And I don't think that you need to have a structured system with this uh, first, second, third grade, and so on mm-hmm. and so forth to be able to obtain that knowledge. We just right. talked about it, right? 12 yeah. years of going to school to go get in debt in this current financial yeah. theft. Exactly. Versus doing what you're doing <laughs> and just exactly creating value for yourself. Absolutely. So I just want to get you guys uh, perspective. I know this was not one mm-hmm. of the ones we had, but I just want to get you guys perspective. What is your vision as a parent? What is your vision for your kids down the line with Bitcoin and and just the level of intellect that you guys are passing on to them? How do you imagine uh, that turning out? Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> what we really want to do is we've been homeschooling the children for uh, quite some time. Yeah. It's the, the curriculum that we created. So it's not a something, not state, uh, right. state of Florida sanctioned or anything like that. It's a curriculum we created. And what we want to do is, as far as Bitcoin, we want to have early education. And the children have a very great understanding because of (laughs) video games. Because, you know, in video games, they want, you know, this and they trade. They want the gaming tokens. Yeah, they want the tokens. Yeah, so they understand understand Bitcoin. So when we talk about it, and, um, you know, for our, our eldest, our, our eldest son, we let him know about the, uh, uh, he needs to know the keys and the passwords for different wallets and all this stuff. But we teach them the value of Bitcoin as building wealth and within your family. And mm-hmm. these are things that we just talk to them about, you know. And I think, well, we had them. They build their own coin yeah to understand yeah. making a white paper and, and you know how it works and all this stuff that was a whole project, was a project. During, it was two semesters ago oh, they built really? their own gaming coin but That's each powerful. child <laughs> also has their own bitcoin investment doesn't matter yeah. if you're right. the 22 year old or the six year old simon utilizes um the sun exchange mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. every child has multiple panels yeah and because it's a, a, a low time preference investment, mm-hmm. right? It's a long term investment. Yeah. As the panels gain, generate that revenue, that is their investment. That's part of their inheritance. Um, Sean is at the age now where he is going to be working with dad to buy his first panel for his unborn child. There is no child yet. Oh, wow. But when the child gets <laughs> here, the child will already have a um, Bitcoin generating um, income. Yeah. Income. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Reginald 16, when he, as he's getting his first job and so on and so forth, he's going to buy his first panel for his first unborn child yeah. and so on and so mm-hmm. forth. 
And then as the children come, they will get their, and it's, it's just basically um, implementing yeah. the trust, the mindset, in the blockchain. Yeah. right? So that every generation is now responsible and accountable mm -hmm. to a generation that does not yet exist. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. The same way there is a group of people trying to end debt a generation that does not exist. Mm. Yeah. Reverse so engineering. Uh, exactly. Yep. Engineer Reversal. That. In Absolutely. Benefit. Mm -hmm. It's it's funny, you guys. It's not funny, but it's it's kind of connecting the dots because you went to El Salvador, and you were on the Bitcoin beach, and you saw Bitcoin in the future, where you have a Bitcoin economy, transactions yeah. in Bitcoin, everything done in Bitcoin, and now your 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 next generation is already learning dirt at a very young age, so they're already seeing the future. But now we we'll think about it, right? A lot of Americans, a lot of people around the world don't even see that yet. Mm -hmm. The media doesn't preach that, which is oh, why won't. we have you, which is why we have the gentlemen of crypto. This is why we have Stack Nation. You know, by the way, if you have not liked and subscribed, just go ahead and do that right now. Follow them yeah. on their channel. Um, and I'm looking like, why is everybody still stuck in gold, silver, and stocks? We transitioned out of stock really fast. Like mm -hmm. we, we were mad during uh, the old AMC. Like we had money, man. We were getting ready to exit the market. Like, <laughs> come on, man. Money, come in. Lambo money, you know. I remember that day. We were shot out of the market. Yeah, they froze the thing. Uh, After that, we were like, we yeah. got to find something else. Unfortunately for us, though, we found Cardano. Well, I found Cardano. Well, in uh, a way, we started with Cardano first. Yeah. Okay. Even though it was already buying Bitcoin. I didn't know about Bitcoin. I told my brother to buy something blockchain. This guy went and bought Bipro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's where we are. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think Bipro was popping for a while, but that's what it bought. So you, you see what I'm saying? We are going to the future. How do we get folks to transition out of this scammy stock market, gold market, and fiat system? Now, I will say this, right? Well, Go ahead, David. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, well, I would say, are you speaking of like the uh, gold and silver is precious metal market? Like the physical you, table? You, you talk about the gold market. I've seen you talk about it on the show a lot. Yeah. Where I'm like, but we know we can't, it's not, it's not, we can't move it around as much as we can move Bitcoin. I mean, I can see yeah, the, yeah, I can, I can the, the gold in your bling bling, you know. I'm still rocking my little mm -hmm. African stuff. But, uh, <laughs> So with some of the uh, so uh, so this is mindset thing. So yeah, uh, because of the divisibility <clears throat> and um, the portability of, of Bitcoin, it's always good because we say you know you should go to different places and plant flags. So mm -hmm. when you go to another country, if you have to carry a duffel bag full of precious metals, you know you have problems and customs and immigration. Where if you just went with your Bitcoin. Nobody knows you have it. You moved across a nation state and it's no problem. But yeah. one of the things about when you have these investments, you still want to protect your wealth. So mm -hmm. there is protection in wealth in uh, precious metals uh, because they have been um, sound money for what, 6,000 years? Over 6,000 years. And so yeah. there's a protection level there. And with the Bitcoin, we always say, I'm not a Bitcoin trader. We're not Bitcoin traders, but we understand mm -hmm. you have to take uh, profits at some point. You know, at some point when you see Bitcoin hitting, you take some profits. You know, if you if you had bought it low and you it got it and it's high, take profits. And then you kind of secure it in precious metals as just um, a protection, a level of protection. And that's what that's what our big thing about precious metals is it protects your wealth. I also want to say this, and I think this is important for mm -hmm. um, for the black community. Let's just mm -hmm. call it what it is. Talk to them. Talk <laughs> to them. Let, let me sit up straight. No, 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 let let us all sit him. up. Let them know. Let's, yeah. let's yeah. say it again, because now we got to pay attention. Yes. Now we go to class. There we go. Right? For our yes. community, right? Yeah. When you see children come into opportunity where they have access or ease of access to large capital you mm -hmm. notice that they squander it oh man come on man you gotta get that, those 22 inch rims you know yeah nice and car a lot of that comes from a a, a, a lack mindset um mm -hmm. scarce mindset precious metals 
from a parent standpoint, I'm a mother, I'm a nation builder. So there are things I want to incorporate into my children that I would like to become part of the collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. When you have tangible silver and gold, mm -hmm. for smaller children like our six-year-old and our 13-year-old, we have them sit and, and not play with it, but engage with the silver, engage with the gold, be in the presence of this vibration. This is your wealth. Understand that you have a responsibility to it, that you must be accountable to it. Get used to it so that as you become a mature adult and the opportunities come to you because we would have been building their mindset all along the way, you do not squander your wealth. Mm -hmm. You build upon your wealth. Mm -hmm. And then when our sons have their children, they will be born into a wealth mindset. They are used to engaging in wealth. They're used to seeing wealth. They understand wealth without having to prove themselves to poor people by pretending mm -hmm. to look rich, yeah, right? Is. And I think that that's an important um, character to be built, especially yeah. for children yeah. in our country. And I also understand too that it's, um, it's strategic because we, we did a couple shows and we probably did no more on having your paperwork in order. Yes. So yeah, if, he did those. if you don't have your paperwork in order, but what you can have is a duffel bag full of silver or gold. That can be transferred mm -hmm. to them immediately. No lawyer involved. Nobody else has no, to be no a part probate, of it. No probate, none of that. It's just, this is what I left for you. You got it. You don't have to go fight for it. Mm -hmm. and, and they shut down bank accounts mm -hmm. and all these things. You got to prove mm -hmm. this and prove that. It's a way to transfer wealth right now. And two, when you have multiple children mm -hmm. and they're growing up engaged in wealth, when one or more of their parents pass away, they're not fighting over what the parents left to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're not fighting yes. each other like, this is mine and I need this. And everybody has been engaged with it their whole life. So it's a seamless, outside of the grief, it's a yeah. seamless transition when the parents transition, when that previous generation transition is a seamless yeah. um seamless transition yeah, yeah seamless redundant. transition yeah right absolutely. for them to now to take responsibility and accountability for wealth you're going to keep hearing me use those two terms because those are the two terms that the masses avoid and mm -hmm. if they have a choice to not perform those two things they won't yeah. and it's something that has to be taught and has to be demonstrated right you got to walk your talk from yeah. when the children are young. And that's why these children are growing up to be adults who are not accountable and are irresponsible. That's what we're seeing. And that's why, that's why it's, uh, as I say, we use precious metals strategically yeah, we, uh, yeah. for our family. It has a great yeah. utility. And for that purpose, it's a great way to get young children to engage and be used to being wealthy. They don't have, um, they don't have a poor mindset. They don't have an mm -hmm. impoverished mindset. Nope. They don't have a scarce mindset. They don't move in lack because from small children, they realize I am wealthy. But I also understand that in my wealth, I have a responsibility. And these are the things that I need to work on in order to sharpen that particular sword. Mm -hmm. And it's really shame on the nation yeah. builders. I'm shaming y'all. I'm sure I'm gonna get some <laughs> emails. But it is because that is the nation builders responsibility. Yeah. Right. Everybody wants to blame the dad or the baby daddy or the male person in the relationship. But if you are going to sit and, you know, want to get patted on the back for I'm a single mother, I do it all. I'm mommy and daddy. Then do it. Yeah. You want to make the bed, make the damn bed. Yeah. And it's, it's it, you know, it's a little it's it diverse, like our um, good friend of the show, Andy Shackman, CEO of um, Miles Franklin. Yeah. He tells you gold and silver. That is wealth. It is wealth. Mm -hmm. But then you will see um, the opposition where you say, um, let's use gold for an example. Gold is analog. Bitcoin is digital. Mm -hmm. yeah. And anytime you have a digital version of analog, it's, it's always, always going to be more optimal. It's always optimal and better. 
So yes. but we can use both. We can use right. both. Right. It doesn't keep you. You have a super a, a super computer in your pocket, your iPhone, yes. your Android. Doesn't mean you won't have a beautiful grandfather clock in your home. This is true. I like this. I like this. I like this a lot. Okay. It's the pink white mindset, y'all. <laughs> yeah, say. yeah. I like this. I because this, it. it's mine. This, this, <laughs> this brings me to this brings me to one thing. This brings me to this point here. Okay. And actually, it really just goes really nicely into my next question, which is about financial advisors, right? Okay. Let's what I like about everything you guys just explained there is the fact that um unlike the everyday person, okay, we spoke about like the Bitcoin class, the fiat class. Unlike the everyday person, most people don't think about being intentional about putting together a strategy for their financial growth, right? Mm -hmm. Personally, I was not really about it like that until I started understanding these things. So now it's all about now managing that strategy, but you have to really think about it, right? Like while you're explaining the precious metals specifically, it's something that, you know, like I was talking about uranium, getting to the uranium mm -hmm. and stuff. Precious metals. You can start in your house though. Hmm? You can store it. Yeah, no, it's it's fine. But I think that the concept is about the concept is about something that you are um, investing your wealth into, mm -hmm. right? When I look at it, like real estate, mm -hmm. like like right now, people are going back home, buying as much land as possible. But this is about having a portfolio of things that make sense yes. to move you into the future, and 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 your family as well. When you take the Overall, in, let's say you take you have whatever portfolio. Okay, we have precious metals. Maybe you just have um, equities. You know, you might have some scam stuff like the stuff that uh, BlackRock and all of these guys sell, <laughs> right? Where if you win, they will halt it so that you definitely ever make profit. You know, hey, but at least it's only ten percent the ticket. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fine. Right. So you can have a, a combination of different things. What would you say to? Mm, we'll come back to the strong independent women later because you bring <laughs> don't, go there, but, don't go there. Nah, nah. I know you always go nutty with no, that. No, no, listen, Aaron don't brought go it up. Aaron brought it up, so I gotta bring it back. You know what I mean? She's here. We get a pass. We're, we're flying with her. <laughs> okay, to send a few things to the strong independent women. <laughs> okay, this is what I was going to say. Um, what are your thoughts on financial advisors? Who is still out here pushing the same investment strategies as before, whether it's 60, whatever. 60, 60 to 40, dividends, portfolio. Right. And listen, it's all fine and good. They should do that. But they are still ignoring Bitcoin at this point. They are not talking to people about Bitcoin as a, a, a viable part of their investment portfolio. Right. Because that's the main thing that you guys have, like the precious metals. You know, you combine that with something like Bitcoin. Yeah. And yeah, it's like you have this fortress too, yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Right? On my end, for me, for example, I was like, hey, uh, I was mostly, I do not have a lot of uh, pressure products, but I have uranium. I know uranium or something that was like, this is cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'll, I'll keep that going. And then, but everything else, like, you know, Apple and all these other things that these people are essentially just yanking the lever on back and forth mm -hmm. with all their buybacks and such. I'm like, this is not for me. So I left it. At this point in time, I'm looking at it and I'm going, well, I will never sell my Bitcoin. But if I bought MSTR and it ran up along with Bitcoin, then I can take profits from MSTR. Right. Things like that. Right. Financial advisors who still do not mention Bitcoins. What are your thoughts on them? Man, who do you want me to bang on or you want to bang on? Let's go. I'm I was sorry. waiting for this <laughs> one. <laughs> so, <clears throat> financial advisors are tied to corporate wealth. Yeah. Okay. Their self-interest is traditional finances, um, self-interest in take whatever you can from the client. Self-interest. Mm. <laughs> Keyword. <Yes>. Keyword, <laughs> self-interest. Their best interest is not for you. They yeah. are what I would like to, and everything has a utility. I'm the queen of that slogan, and I believe in that deeply. Everything has a utility. But you right. also have to understand how that utility works. Mm, they are right. tied to corporate wealth. Mm. You are just a client and their idea is how can I get my commission off of you? Okay. Most mm. financial advisors are not paid based on performance. Mm -mm. If they were, people would do better. So here's the thing. It's important that you <laughs> are the savior of your own 
household, right? Financial advisors, for lack of a better term, are salesmen who are selling you a product. They understand how that product works. They can tell you the utility of the product. It may benefit you. In the long run, it may not. So as people, we have to come out of the dependency on other people to be our saviors. We feel like because we don't know about something that because this is what your title is, you know everything about it and whatever you tell me is gold. And that's not true. Right. And it goes back to if you just took a little bit of time and learn this thing on your own. You can develop your own financial strategy that will benefit you. And I'm not saying that there is no utility to financial advisors, but just understand that they are traditional finance. It has a very analog um, concept to it. And they are not working in your self-interest. They work in the self-interest, the corporate wealth that they're tied to. And once you have that understanding, then you can I got a joke though. I got a quick joke before before you take this one, Simon. You just call these guys with CPAs and level C level six certifications a glorified salesman. Yes. Don't 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 let them catch you on the streets, man. These people are I mean, bankers, the you know, in the suits. It, right? Because <laughs> if they were moving in you, the customer, your financial interests are, you know, are, are, yeah. I'm moving in your yeah. best interest. Then yes. Bitcoin yes. would be mass adopted across yes. the board yeah. for traditional finance. We know how bankers work. You are tied to corporate wealth. You're not moving in hey, my best interest. Hey, hey, take a break, man. Mm. 2% <laughs> of you giving me your money and then 20% anytime the money goes up. Perfect are you deal. Guys Familiar with Mike Maloney? No, I'm not. I'm not, but um, well, there's a gentleman in the space. His yeah, name is yeah. Mike Maloney. He's the CEO of GoldenSilver.com. GoldenSilver.com. Yeah. He lives mm -hmm. in Puerto Rico, where he's benefiting Rico. from X66. And he, um, it, when she was talking about the, he 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 came out with the series of what was the series about money? It was called Hidden Money. Hidden Money. He came out with a series about hidden money. And he money. teaches the layperson how our monetary policy has evolved and how it works. But I'm bringing yeah. him up because when you hear his story's journey, his mother had a significant amount of wealth and she passed away. Didn't she pass away? Yeah, she passed away. She, she passed was, away. She was sick at first. Yeah, she was, she was sick, sick at first. She had a financial advisor. They mm -hmm. were losing money, like losing water in a flooded house. Yeah. And what he had to do was he had to fire the financial, and it was a financial advisor at a reputable, well, when I said reputable, of time. at a company that's university, universally yeah. recognizable. I'm not going to call them reputable. Right? <laughs> company None that's universally reputable. recognizable. We've heard of it. And he took <laughs> a, a few years yeah. to yeah. learn how money works. Even he didn't know at the time how money works how our monetary policies have evolved, understanding how banks work, how they really work. Mm. And once he was able to get that understanding, right, and he had to be diligent about it, then he was able to not only build on his mother's um, estate, well, yep. but to make back the money that was lost in using a professional financial advisor. That financial advisor could have give a shit. It, it could mm. not. Not and, and let's shout out to Max Kaiser. Uh, we're a big Max Kaiser followers. Yeah, yep. he will tell you about the contillionaires. The contillionaires, yeah. And people like Warren Buffett, who are like, oh, this is one of the best investment people in all time. But he's a contillionaire. He, yep. He's right there at the money printer. Chill sure. at the White House, making the I policy. I <laughs> at the money printer for the contillionaires who are watching this. My name is Aaron Simon. If there's a seat for me at that table. I would like to join. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like to but with Bitcoin standards, right? <laughs> no, I just want the regular fiat so I can buy, print the fiat and buy Bitcoin with it. I need it. These hedge fund managers and financial advisors and stuff. Yeah. And uh, it, it's just really beating you. Right. Down. So do they have a utility? Maybe. But let, just let them know how you really feel, They really are selling you a product. Mm. Mm. Yeah. They're not really helping ETF. you to get your financial um, portfolio in yep. order. You know, they tell you things like if you make 
this percentage per year. It's great. And it's kind of like if you took the time to kind of learn, this is my financial advisor. Yeah. Does he have a Series 6? No, he doesn't. But he spent over a decade learning what he needed to learn in order to create the financial vision and mm -hmm. strategy for the Simon family yeah. where we have a legacy already down to our great grandchildren. So we don't have any grandchildren yet. And his vision was them, not even the generation that's not here yet, but the mm -hmm. generation that's going to come from the non-existent generation. I want to make sure they're okay. And that, that is the bootstrap that we need to be pulling ourselves up by. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Incredible. That's like so far into the future. Oh, yeah. A lot of people don't and look that far, man. You cannot compete with someone that is planning. <laughs> Generations but of that now, is how planning families to plan. Do you hear yeah. Michael's strategy? So Michael yeah. Saylor has a 99-year investment plan. plan. He doesn't even have kids. Mm -hmm. He has a niece. He doesn't mm -hmm. even have kids. Remember your last live show? You talked about the Legacy Family, that book. Actually, I have mm -hmm. it upstairs. It's a book a lot of people need to read. I've given, I've bought it, and I've given it to a lot of family members, and none of them read it. And I'm like, it's it's a must read. Absolutely. You gotta read it. Absolutely. Now, which book is this? It's the Legacy Family. We were talking about it in one of your live shows. I think someone brought it up, and I put the link on the live feed. Oh, okay, it's yes, a yellow yes. book. Yes. Yeah, we were talking about the books. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, oh. Who was that? Yep. Was I think it was either as Trek with two Ks who brought it up, and you knew yep. the name mm -hmm. of the book. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, yeah. It's a really good book. It's a must read. And you guys are talking about everything about that book about, about that book right now. One thing I have to say, though, I think you guys are implementing the strategy, but you guys are not saying it, is the fact that you guys are Americans living in Mexico, which means that you're earning dollars, but you automatically reduce your cost, your cost of living and the ability for the system to overtax you. So yeah. you're reducing the taxation or reducing yeah. the, the amount of inflation on yes. your fiat dollars earned from your right. work yeah right and so Super smart. yeah so understand like i uh, exactly what you're saying uh u.s dollars being mm -hmm. transferred into uh mexican pesos mm -hmm. as we live here in mexico and we reduce the inflation because yeah. there is inflation here in mexico oh boy mm -hmm. yeah but, but we still deal with it but it's, it's not as bad as it would be in the united in the states US, right and uh, yes, we do have that. And for the people we talk about, if you can, um, like we said, plant flags, you know, 126,000 US dollars before you are even taxed. Yes. If mm -hmm. you spend a certain amount of time in different, uh, different places, right? Mm -hmm. Here it's 180 days, right? Yes. So in certain places, you know, mostly in Latin America, it's 180 days. You spend 180 days in Latin America, and you make all the way up to one or 26, you won't even be taxed. The idea to that is, too, is that you have to be diligent and disciplined in your books because mm -hmm. we're a bit over that. We have to do a lot of things to kind of tax shelter mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. in order to even enjoy that benefit, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a significant amount that has to go into my 401k. Mm -hmm. There's a significant amount that goes into iTrust Capital then we have to find other ways to kind of tax shelter mm -hmm. our income so that we don't have to pay into yeah. that. But yep. at the end of the day, every time you hear us talk, it's about a very specific discipline. Yep, Strategy. Even moving here, it's a new culture. It's mm -hmm. not even like I'm Mexican, so we're going back to the country of my family and I'm familiar with all of this. No. Papi. So, right? Yeah. Simon had a vision and it was culture shock. You got to learn a new language. We learned a new language the hard way. Um, yeah, just I, immersing I ourselves it. into yeah. it. Don't it. listen to him, y'all. I, 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 I am. <laughs> He was already, he was just there in your mind. Uh, you, just to, you, just to, you just had to reawaken Learning it. Huh? The environment, how are we going to live? How yeah. do you kind of navigate the scams, the cons, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I have some women, I'm going to pick my words carefully, and they basically use terms like, you so lucky. You know, my life looks very 
glorious to them. It looks fabulous to them. Okay. And I want to say I trade off so many conveniences mm -hmm. for the sake of the mission and the vision mm -hmm. of our, and we treat it like a business. We treat our, our family like a business. Yep, it is. Can I say this? And I want to say this to the people when, um, because we go on here and we do different things and talks about ways that you can avoid paying taxes, then people want to say you're not American because you don't want to pay into the tax system. No. Right. So I want to, I want to, I want to. That's the group of people that they understand you're being scammed, but you know, they hold a flag on their head and said, no way. One you day scam is not going to be a scam. What are doing with the tax dollars? <laughs> yeah. Anytime any country has some type of issue, they're like, oh yeah, you need some money for your conflict? Sure. Exactly. Here's $35 million. Right, 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 right. And you know, <laughs> and because we talk about people moving to other countries and having loopholes and taxes, there's only two countries right now that I could, uh, United States and um, who was the other country? Eritrea. Those two countries are only that. people who tax their citizens no matter where they live. So know. we <laughs> always have to pay tax. Any other place, if you were from, I don't know, Germany, you and you moved to Sweden, you wouldn't have to pay ta taxes and, in Germany. Yeah, and what you're doing yeah. is you're just reducing yeah, that, because, that obligation. Yeah, because they have that obligation on us no matter where we go, so we have to use the loopholes. What am I getting for my taxes? If I live in Mexico, what do I get? They try to say you get the embassy and all that stuff and man you do i mean i get it but nah, but no nah, it's it's like exactly. they take away the whole mcdonald's and then try to sell you just the uh, the cup of uh, what is it the this the machine what do they call that ice cream machine yeah and the, they're trying to say um, the well, yeah you get this the McFlurry, yeah. I mean. the exactly never works. <laughs> yeah exactly right yeah. yeah but i wanted to make something clear right because some people do see this lifestyle as jet setting is fabulous mm -hmm. there is there are trade-offs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you are mm -hmm. saying that you want, not your grandchildren, but your mm -hmm. great-grandchildren to have a super head start in life, our great-grandchildren will have Bitcoin. Mm. Yeah. And we well, you all know, know. Go ahead. You know what's funny? People will say that because they were not in the room with you when you guys were making those sacrifices when Simon was learning about Bitcoin. And you were like, uh, babe, you need to teach me about Bitcoin. And you were making sacrifices when nobody wanted to buy Bitcoin way back in 2014. Yes. Yeah. Paper Bitcoin. Think about it. But all along the way, but even our lifestyle, Simon's vision is to um, invest 80% and live off of 20 while True. not taking too much away from the children. It's a very disciplined lifestyle. Right very. now, because of inflation, we've had to adjust that to a 70-30 kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. But I haven't got my eyebrows done in like five years, y'all. Uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't look like it. It Could doesn't look like it. Could not even tell. We can't tell. My hair and my own nails. Okay? Hey, it looks great. I'm, doing, no, I'm just joking. It's hey, true. I was going to say, it sounds like a like, new skill you learned. Show, I do have to tell certain women, like, there are trade-offs. And yeah. you are going to sacrifice convenience for discipline. Mm. And mm. two, I know women get on me. I get the emails and shit. Mm. If I want to buy... <laughs> I get the emails and shit, let's go. I do. <laughs> if I want to buy next. something <laughs> that costs a, a decent amount of money, yes. I go to my husband and say, baby... I saw this thing on Amazon. You know, I want you to look at it. This is how much it costs yeah. because we have a plan and the team has to stick to the plan. If he mm -hmm. looks at it, now keep in mind, I'm, I'm his favorite thing, right? So he wants mm -hmm. me to be happy. But if mm -hmm. he tells me like, baby, let's not do this now because I really wanted to kind of put this into blah, 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 blah. Then that's what we do. Yeah. Or if not, she gets the triple Gucci purse. That's so don't listen to him. Let's go in the market and let's go trade. Well, <laughs> let's, let's see if we can sip out of, out of the market. We are a team. We have yeah. a joint bank account. That's our money. Yeah. No matter who name is on the paycheck, that's our money. And we have to stick to the mission and the vision of yeah. the CEO. Yeah, we do I have said, a you hoes would work for corporate America and do whatever your boss tell you. But when the CEO of my organization, which is him, of Simon Family Investment Ventures says, this is what we're doing, 
then damn it, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Right? Don't try to shame me. And that's what we're doing. Come on. But I just wish that our community would put things along those terms. Yeah. I'm not yeah. the CEO of Simon Family Investment Ventures. I'm not the CEO of the house. No, but when, when you come out, you still look fly. You got everything you need. I do, I do, I do. I do, I do that job. You know, it's just living from the back, man. Yeah, it, it, it never acts like it's the bus. Listen, here's the thing. I think, first of all, first of all, a couple of things. I would say that um, sp speaking of this strong, independent women's situation, mm -hmm. okay, uh -oh. I know heads are about to roll. You're probably about uh -oh. to get some more emails. <laughs> Don't email us if you see me saying anything right now. Because you email, email me. Us. Yes. Because <laughs> no, email listen, email if, Aaron. You email me, I'll reply with straight insults. I'm not playing with you. Okay. So <laughs> this is the first thing I would say. I was gonna say, you know, when like you said, you mentioned that, you know, some people might see, you know, you doing your thing, just living your life, mm -hmm. which is the outcomes of the choices you've made. Absolutely. So really it's just normal to you that you're doing whatever you're doing. Meanwhile, someone else is looking at it and going, your life looks so fancy. Mm. I wish I could do that. Mm -hmm. I would say to that type of person, if you're looking at someone's life and it looks like what you want and you're not seeing a path to it, you're doing something wrong. Sure. You should just take that as your first hint. At least ask and get some help. Right. Figure it out from there. Right. <laughs> Figure it out. Go get help. Whatever. But a lot but, of time when you take the time to explain... Yeah how they can get there yeah i'm gonna say 9.9 .9 times out of 10 they're not willing to take yes. the steps that exactly. you have taken to get there and it's back to accountability and responsibility exactly exactly so in that case it sounds like you're exactly where you need to be as a spectator <laughs> because you don't yes. want to play the game <laughs> you see what i'm saying don't get on the field yeah. Don't get on the court. It's like, come on. If you, you might see a you might see a football player, you know what I mean, you know, you know, looking absolutely beast mode, and you see him running, you know, trying to get get you know, getting touchdowns. And you may be like, damn, that's cool. I want to do that. You can, but you're gonna have to go do the training that he did. But you don't at the gym at four o'clock in yes. the morning and yeah. again exactly. at one o'clock in the afternoon and again right. at eight o'clock at night. You don't see that exactly. And me, me personally. I love to see, you know, like, a, a, you know, you want to do a full court uh, run to a touchdown. Fine. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I like to see the incredible uh, feats that human beings can accomplish mm. when they commit themselves, Something. when they discipline themselves. The outcome of that is extremely, you know, a lot of people, most people will never, ever know what it's like to be at their best. At their really, literally at their very best. Personally, I have been in that range. Where I feel like I have come, I don't know if it's uh, the highest, the ceiling necessarily, but this is the highest point that I have mm -hmm. ever reached for myself. When I committed myself to accomplish one thing when I was lifting and I got to that point. It was it was a sense of, um, there's this laser focusness. Yes. Right? You start planning things even better. You start strategizing. And even though you're just doing one small thing, that discipline starts transferring over to other areas of your life. Mm -hmm. So everything as a whole starts to elevate, right? So when it comes to changing or trying to really live the lifestyle that you imagine, like you were saying, um, when people <laughs> look at you and but they're not willing to put in the work, there's kind of no two ways about it, right? And that's why I say if you if you see that and you you want it then you're doing something wrong because the only other thing you can do is to take the action that it requires. And, you know, of course, there's also time. Time is the part of the equation that no one can beat. So you have to be patient, mm -hmm. right? You have to be patient and then things will turn out. The other thing I was going to mention from what you guys were saying here is this idea of migration when, you know, when we speak about people that look at you living in another country and they might say whatever they want to say mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm from Cameroon. You're not American. Why are you right. live in America? <laughs> no, you live fine. in another listen, country. I, listen, man. I, we only want to be in the best country. That's all it is. <laughs> 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 and and for for me, for example, right? I'm from Cameroon originally. Mm -hmm. My parents uprooted all of us and came, you know, flew across the ocean to come here because they had a vision that we can go find something better here. They looked at the uh, the variables that are involved. If we stay here, things mm -hmm. might 
get value and sometimes maybe they will not have the opportunities we want to see them get maybe they will not have the opportunities to be able as great same as you are with your kids right uh, getting them prepped for uh, the future so we all migrated here for better opportunity and in the same mindset i think that if things are not looking great where you are does not necessarily mean that you don't like i mean heck you guys served the country you put in your time and your energy your life on the line for this environment that you believe in and if um, at some point in time down the line a bunch of people are perverting this thing that you believed in mm -hmm. to the point that you even you know were willing to put your life on the line for it i think that it is only reasonable to i mean one you can kind of fight the system Mm -hmm. We know that no one can beat them at that war. But the alternative would be to find where things are more favorable for you Wait, so that you can right. continue to elevate. Mm -hmm. And that's how I look at that. Yeah. So, so yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but yeah. No, that, go ahead. That is something that, um, that I learned very early from yeah. a person named Andrew Henderson. He's a, it's, it's, podcast called nomad capitalist but that's one of his main things go where you're treated best right yeah. Yeah. um you may still like like we still hold united states citizenship but mm -hmm. we just went to a place that treated us better um like you said you have to leave from violence we also had to leave from violence right mm -hmm. there's no violence here amongst us mm -mm. but yes they may talk about the cartel doing things in mexico i'm just speaking on mexico in particular mm -hmm. but it's no violence amongst uh, us as black people so yes we did go where we were treated best it is uh um, it's it's what i like to call reverse engineering right mm -hmm. you can go from your home country to another country and get you know treated better then why can't we go from our home country and go somewhere else and be treated better, but still be seen as, like you said, we put the work in. We're still citizens. We're still, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, patriots. We, we we put our work and in. And we make sure we tap back and give back to our back. community virtually, because that's the only way we can do it right now. I'm going to tell y'all a funny joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tell us. I guess I was going to see mom, you. Give that. I FaceTime her, and my mom, yeah. I see Black Mama 101, right? She looked at me. She said, you know, I didn't move from Guyana to the U.S. for you to move to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, that's cold. <laughs> I did not see that one coming. <laughs> I said, but you walk so I can run, mommy. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. I said, you walk so I can run. That's but, incredible. Uh, but it's true, right? Like, my yeah. mom had the same idea. At the time, it was British Guyana. Mm -hmm. In South America, I'm actually closer to home than she is, but <laughs> and um, things were dicey because they wanted their independence. Yeah. So she went to the United States. She brought my dad, and we talking about the um, mid '60s during. Oh man! <laughs> you know, if they moved that straight, she didn't expect. Yeah, they moved yeah. straight to New York, and um, right during the civil rights era. Yeah, right in the '60s. So from 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 from, from frying pan into fire. Damn. Yeah. So like, yeah. not only are you black and it's a problem, you black and you not from here. So mm. it was rough, just, but that's that's a double whammy. She walked so I could run. So you know, it's just one of those things. Yeah. Absolutely. I want to I want us to close this on one last thing because I've been listening and trying to absorb everything that you guys were saying lately. And I want to say something that I think is very unique to Simon family investment and ventures that a lot of America misses. Mm -hmm. that I think it's still in a lot of countries around the world, which is the idea of the family unit. Yes. Uh, and I think you guys are doing uh, a great job at that. And you guys are representing us very well. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the job well done. I think uh, uh, the younger generation should continue to look up to you guys. I think you guys should even have a coaching uh, program for maybe newlyweds. Oh, I think there's a market there for you guys. Oh, uh, cool. especially the younger generations because you know I'm recently married I've not been married as long as you guys and I apply some of what you guys are talking about you know I, I listen to you Simon um, the old managing the accounts uh, you being coachable uh, allowing him to lead 
uh, you're listening and also helping implement the idea, uh, working together as a team, uh, building a legacy together, laying good examples for the kids. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not easy. It's not no. easy out here. No. Uh, and I have to say, though, you guys do a pretty good job doing hey. that. And I just wanted to this, give that yeah, to this, this is my homie. This, that's my homie. Hey, that's my homie. This is man. You know, but, you know. like, for real, for real, for real, for real, for real. Run for that. I take nation building very, very seriously. Because yeah. yeah. when I'm gone, those are the fruits of my loins. And I think it's important that we can feed them yeah. what we're building yeah. so that they can continue to build on it. I mm -hmm. see that's what Caucasian legacy families do. They've been uh, doing. Yeah. Right? When you read those books, like, um, mm -hmm. what was the name of the island? Jekyll Island. Yeah, Jekyll Island. When they took uh, over the, the feds and you start mm -hmm. looking into those families, yeah. the Rothschilds who were previously it. the Balfours, oh, yep. that's how so they, they have their grandchildren and great-grandchildren mm -hmm. line. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that Chase Bank now, mm -hmm. Those legacy children are still getting paid from what their great, 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 yep. great grandfather yep. did. Yep. And we have to kind of adopt some of the, not the savage parts, right? Not that. Mm -hmm. But we have to adopt some of those concepts and Smarts. ideologies yeah. that we value these children so much mm -hmm. that this is what we're willing to pour into you. And far too often I see children mm. seem to be a byproduct of a mishap in a relationship mm. and that's how they're treated and mm. we really need to kind of take a shift mm -hmm. um and and treat the children like we're, i value you so much i'm going to build something for you and teach you how to build on it yeah because uh we, we work with the bk crypto crew now and uh Rishana and the group focuses on the mental aspect of finances and sadly in the black community we don't start at plus we we'll start at first of all fixing the negatives of the finances yeah. that we've dealt with or that yeah. we have been dealt us before yeah. we can even get ahead and start. Yes. Well, and that's true, man. And I'm glad to hear that you. Um, I, I mean, uh, congratulations! You, you say you're newly married. I mean, I mean, I'm not new, new, but you I don't know, know what is new marriage. I, I'm not. I'm not How as old as you guys been married. How long have you been? Married? Oh yeah, I'm I'm an old man. Now? Uh, if you cannot remember, it's you will marry too long. You know 2017. I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, listen, but yeah, that's uh, beautiful. Like just building a family out like that, yeah. and having that information, that information where you mm -hmm. build on generation on top of generation, where you, mm -hmm. you have that thought process. Like I'm thinking yeah. about my grandchildren and stuff, uh, and uh, that's what uh, that's what we really try to do. You know, mm -hmm. our kids are, are getting old, and they know they know the game, and they have the keys. They have the keys, the keys they to know. the kingdom. They, they know, know what to do and how to know what happened. I, I, I could disappear right now. They know what to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, 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 that's the problem. That, that is the but true no. definition of kingship. You know, yeah, okay. that's the true definition. Like, you know, I'm a king. I'm a king. I'm a king. Yeah. Kings does not go around not living any empire left for their generations. A true yeah. definition of a king, you know, that we'll talk about in our community is you leave something. Mm -hmm. You leave a legacy. Yeah. And that's exactly what it is. True definition of kingship. Yeah, and you leave a legacy and you teach, but them, it says how, that. You teach them how to handle the legacy that you left. Yep. It yeah. says it in the Bible that an evil man does not leave an inheritance for his son. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. That's biblical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm an evil man. Nope. At least I got that. Nope. <laughs> but it means, what it really Don't means, worry about that. Though, Your seat is secured in heaven. The, Your seat is secured in heaven, man. You got it. <laughs> when you look at it from the Hebraic the way they break it down etymology yeah. wise he's mm -hmm. saying a selfish man yes mm -hmm. because you lived a life where it was all about you you didn't think about your son that's mm -hmm. really what they said evil that's how they got let lost me, in translation let me but let really me just selfish. i would like to just i would like to just let's just pump the brick there real quick and i would like to you know let's whip up the hood and i would like to maybe throw a little bit of a wrench in what you just described there uh -oh. a uh an evil man leaves no inheritance for his uh children yeah. or a selfish man leaves no inheritance for his children would you say if we remove selfish man and put strong independent woman <laughs> there you go it might slide in the same way <laughs> no but that's, i think so but no no that's a real thing that it's the same about. outcome 
Because it is. Because mm -hmm. the idea of the independent woman That's is right. to be outside of something. It's what independence means. Mm -hmm. And what they're not understanding is. Come on, we already pulled a grenade on them. Of Let them have it. Humanity is there is no independence in humanity. We are a mm -hmm. network of beings. Community. Right? When God Preach put on. Adam and Eve together, whether you believe in the Bible or not, you have a masculine energy, you have a feminine energy. And the mm -hmm. only way to find balance, whether mm -hmm. you believe, you know, you're a feminist, I don't, I don't care what you are. Science says that balance is how you achieve a homeostasis, is how you achieve good outcomes. Mm -hmm. You need the masculine energy to marry the feminine energy mm -hmm. in order to achieve balance and to begin to create, right? I can't have a baby by myself. He can't have a baby by himself. It's when the man and the woman come together to be able married. to create something that mm -hmm. had not yet existed. And if it's that way in the natural, you have to understand it's that way in the, the supernatural physical, as well. Supernatural, yeah. finances. Absolutely incredible. Everything, all the way around. Yeah, and, and, you know, yeah. as above, so, so below. below. Yeah. As it yeah. is in heaven, so it is on earth. Yeah. And I do want the women to understand that Physiologically, you cannot be independent, right? Mm -hmm. That's why the team achieves. Shit. Right? So Beyonce has a husband. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you have to, you, and you have to learn how to work as a team. You have Yo. to understand how to leverage strengths against weaknesses. You have mm -hmm. to understand the boundaries of control. Mm. And for my people out there, man, I, I don't know if you guys know. One of my favorite movies is the Book of Eli. Oh Lord! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like, I like, yeah. And the Book of Eli type of world is coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It may not be, you know, tomorrow, but it's coming. Where, it's coming. yes, you, you, it, you're just gonna need. It's gonna be bands. Uh, what, what, did he, what did he say? I can't uh, remember the name that he. Yeah, he used the name, but basically. There's going to be men, and they're going to take advantage And they're going to take everybody. whatever they want. And yeah. strong, independent woman, unless you know how to fight, and you don't have the strength of a man, so you can fight all you want to if he's just, you know, stronger than you, stronger than you. I'm not going to get into it because I get enough bad emails as is. But the idea is that we as women need to work with our men. If mm -hmm. I know that in the world I have certain advantages, I'm going to take those advantages yeah. so I can help get him up level. Right. And then where he has the advantage, he's going to bring me along to have, we are tethered to one another. But in the, at night when we go to bed and she got a Snickers bar, I'm going to take it from her. <laughs> Don't listen. You do be taking my Snickers bar. What you going to do about <laughs> Listen, hey, man, you're the king. <laughs> I got an idea, though. That's you just said move. something about those bad emails. That's the move. You could take oh, those God. bad emails, right? Put them out and put the response to them in a book called The Simmons Family's Answer. <laughs> I know, I should. I do. I respond you, to every email. You know. Yeah, yeah but turn it, turn it into a Sometimes, book. Sometimes, if you're a little disrespectful, I might God, get it. Don't give her work. But she's, she's, I, she's, 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 you can go to work every day, Miss Independent yeah. Woman, and do whatever your boss tell you to do, right? Your husband's yeah. not going to treat you like that. Your husband's not holding you back from anything. Why you yeah. can't work like that in, in a relationship? Your own family understand unit. It. I don't get it. Yeah, she, man. She would get self pushed back for her talking points. Listen, oh, okay. this is the thing, okay? I'm going to explain to you right now. Think about this. Slow it down and think about it. And then we're going to wrap it up after this. But at the same time, I would like to extend another invitation to you guys right away because I think that I really enjoyed this conversation we had. Mm -hmm. And I would like for us to have more of these conversations more often and continue okay. to, you know what I mean, get out there. This is a couple of things. One, I wanted to pull the grenade on this strong independent oh, boy. <laughs> And you so I thank you. You haven't pulled a grenade yet. It loves it, man. I've not, I've not, uh, I've not pulled the grenade. But we have pulled it now. We have pulled it now. I mean, in fact, you already pulled a pin before I could even, you know, start strategizing on it. Every time we have someone, every time we interview someone, I try to think of a clever way as to how I can put someone into the middle of that conversation and see how they respond to it. I know most people don't want to talk about it, but that's exactly why I do it because if we assimilate then we are allowing this mm -hmm. uh, same thing that we are fighting against to, to win continue to get on us yep 
at the same time too i know that at some point in time in my life i lived in a different environment where people were not so sensitive about basic conversations like this today everything is so sensitive that you cannot even speak about politics at work that is actually insane yeah. because that is something that the people that are in this politics are doing things that directly affect your circumstances at work mm -hmm. if there's any place you should be talking about politics you should actually be at work that's how I see it. You spend most of your entire day at work? Yes. <laughs> you should be talking about finances anywhere. You should be at work because these are the people that you're providing your service to. Look at your job as a business. You're providing a service and these people are paying for your time. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to negotiate your salary and things like that. It's business. Look at it as business. So it's definitely important to be talking about finances at work. Mm -hmm. But if people are uninformed, then the small group has their plans still going in a cohesive mm -hmm. manner. Yep. This is why... I think strong independent women do not own Bitcoin. I know that this is a crazy jump, <laughs> but hear me out here. Okay. I just wanted to make this point. You spoke about, you know, the selfish man not leaving anything behind. Um, you know, when you're only thinking of yourself, right? When you only think of yourself, it is very difficult to understand Bitcoin because mm. what Bitcoin is doing, it's really setting a platform for everyone to be connected right yes. we talk about financial inclusion we talk about peer-to-peer -peer activity those mm -hmm. are things that cannot be done by yourself right we talk right. about financial freedom for everyone the mm -hmm. designing of the thing itself is not of an independent approach mm -hmm. it's not of an exclusionary selfish approach, approach. Yep. exactly you cannot be selfish in bitcoin because when you buy bitcoin you can buy that 69k uh the people who bought it before you are going to gain from it there is no way you can buy it and the others don't gain but right. i'll tell you there is a way you can print fiat and nobody else is getting fiat from you printing yep. right you see so it does not work also people would not listen because the things that you're saying Aaron, is nothing radical Mm. you're just saying that this is how to be a decent human being mm. this is how we race just be a decent human being mm. that is it there is no need to <clears throat> put men as the object of your anger or whatever <laughs> it might be. Meanwhile, you could also look at inward at yourself and go, you know what? Maybe I need to stop and see. Because in any situation, you're also part of it, right? How can I change the approach of how things are happening so that the future is better for me? Okay. Mm. okay? You have to be able to listen. Most importantly, listening to yourself. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin itself is not something that you can ever understand if you don't take time to listen. Because part of listening, you know, you can look at it as uh, reading comprehension, right? It's about listening and hearing things and understanding mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Users understand them. And that's the next level of listening. And so if you will not listen to someone who is just telling you, hey, be respectful to you, <laughs> to be respectful to your husband, mm -hmm. right? And such then I don't know how you're going to listen to anything else. And it is reflected in their behavior. Oh, Because the I'm moment saying... you say something, they lash out with emails. Yeah. Instead yeah. of really taking what you have said and said, is this true? Mm -hmm. before, you, before you send that email, ask yourself, is there something that I'm really doing that mm. this person made this person say this about me? Mm -mm -mm. You understand? So I think... Finally. To... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, love. No, there's just one more. There's just one Go more. ahead. Go ahead, sweetheart. I guess it ties into the listening, but you know, I say strong independent women here do not learn. Okay. Mm. Because when something is happening to you and the mistakes. outcomes are not getting you closer to what you want to be mm. or the things you want to have, mm. and you're still exercising the same behaviors, Ooh. you are not learning. Mm -mm. You understand? If you are holding fiat <laughs> and this inflation <laughs> is right now hitting you, and you cannot. You, we've seen how many videos of people on TikTok now saying that they can no longer pay their rent and things like mm -hmm. that, right? But you're still operating in the same mode of money, okay. expecting a different outcome. Yeah, you are not learning. You are not, not learning. learning at all. And Bitcoin is like saying, "Hey, I'm switch here. it up." But that's it. Carry on. But I think too another core, and it's probably a psychology that you might miss because you're not a woman. Women right. are ninety percent of the consumers. Hey. 80% of the consumers, right? Mm -hmm. So don't get married. <laughs> that yeah. the independent right. woman's identity is yeah. that yeah. I can do this without him. 
So yeah, now yeah. she has to keep up a facade of doing well. And that means spending a significant amount of money on making it look like she's doing better than her counterpart, which would be mm -hmm. me, right? Mm -hmm. In addition to that, there is a, as an independent woman, I don't have to ask my husband if I can do this. I do what I want. And in doing what I want, there is a lack of discipline. Like I said, it always dials back down to a lack of discipline. Mm -hmm. There's a lack of financial discipline in trying to build a facade that isn't necessary to build. Yeah. And there's freedom in discipline, actually, I was saying. You, you, you said there's something about that. Freedom. True freedom in discipline. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's something about that financial, that financial independence uh, that is super true, that all oh, 80 to 90 percent of women do a lot of the spending. Mm -hmm. I will say I agree with you on that because I, I had a whole lot more money in my bank account before I got married. <laughs> Right. Let's let's form the bricks, huh? Let's form the bricks. But we are. Okay. So let's form the bricks. You know what I mean? I'm too I'm too close to the blast. Though, <laughs> right? And this is why it's important to kind of do, you know, do your research. From an anthropological standpoint, the study of human beings, yeah, men yeah. are producers. Women are consumers. Yeah, men are men produce so women can consume. Yeah. So it is a natural part of their makeup. But what corporate America does is they exploit the hell out of it and they create mm -hmm. thing after thing and all of the marketing when you look at marketing unless it's beer or steak or it's tools. marketed towards women mm. right consume, beer commercial marketed towards men sports betting marketed towards men pick any other commercial of any other thing even cars they find a way to market it to the woman <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah this is very true we're this is very true but I'm saying from a physiological standpoint, hunter gatherer, yeah. you are mm. a producer and producer. I am a consumer. You produce whatever you killed, you bring it home and I consume it. Yeah. And it is a natural physiological aspect. It's just that they do these little programming things yeah. to really magnify that. And, yeah. and this is why discipline's important because in the day and age that we live in, we have to find ways to kind of, um, like dim that down yeah. don't be such a consumer that all you do is consume and you don't produce anything at all mm -hmm. as a woman you're supposed to produce children you are supposed to produce the nation building that goes along with building a collective consciousness to them i would do more of a nation building thing than i would do a newlywed thing because i've only been married to one person so i couldn't speak to marriage in general you know what i mean mm -hmm. but as far as nation building goes i did it once twice three times four times you know we produce that we consume in order for us to produce that way mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's also something that we don't talk about in our community like we don't understand the fundamentals in our community we don't understand the history with the monetary policy, so we just spend, 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 spend. We don't really know what inflation is. So again, we just spend, 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 spend. We don't mm -hmm. build strategic plans. We don't have conversations in order to build, and we're not willing to work as a team to get it done. So there's a lot of work that still needs to be done in the community, but we are happy with the progress that we can that is so powerful. <clears throat> Let me tell you what I just got from what you said there, and then we're just gonna wrap mm -hmm, it up here. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds to me like what she, what, uh, what Aaron is just explaining there is that, and it just literally just hit me right now. Yep. This is like first time. I'm... In the dynamic of a relationship, mm. what has happened is that corporate America is exploiting mm. your 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 personal economy, right? And this is what I mean. If you are married mm. as a couple. And say your husband is going out and making the money, mm. right? When your wife consumes, mm. as they say, mm -hmm. is consuming the resources that you have brought in, mm -hmm. and but you're spending that resource, that energy towards again your family, which is also your investment. Mm -hmm. So it is these resources that are coming in are essentially powering your personal economy, mm -hmm. right? Your family's economy. Whether it's for education, making the legacy, sure that you're like, right? yep. and continuously building, investing into the future. That is your economy. Corporate America now has now invaded that situation mm. 
Right. Making it such that your wife also has to obviously go and work because you cannot afford anything if both of you are not working. So now they're taking taxes from both of you. Mm -hmm. And then they're marketing things heavily, things that are distracting, things that will not meet any of these keywords that you have mentioned here today, like discipline, accountability, responsibility, sacrifice, and of course, giving up the convenience, which is the main thing that they are literally throwing at women like it's freaking raining cannons or something right everywhere you go and so with that essentially everything that now the, you when they refer to women as consumers it is more the fact that these people are pushing onto them all these advertisements right mm-hmm. i mean we know right now that right now there are times when you're ordering things on amazon and it's not even your decision right so there is that so bad that even the next generation you don't have yeah. time for them which mm-hmm. goes back to the old homeschooling situation exactly. because the kids spend time on tv all day you're in trouble man because yeah. that's where they're gonna get the education from yeah. which <laughs> yeah, right super powerful listen ladies and gentlemen you have to go subscribe okay first of all check out sam uh, simon family investment ventures on follow x okay uh-huh. Give them a strong follow there. And of course, as well as on uh, YouTube. Uh, what days do you guys go live? On, um, typically uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Saturdays uh, but it does, every now we have to adjust. Oh, okay. <laughs> but mostly there those go. days. <laughs> Listen, you will not regret checking it out. Extremely powerful family. I love it. Um, before we wrap this one up here, anything else, anything at all you guys would like to share? with the word out there before we you know, close this one out? Uh, no, uh, nothing much. I you just... got to do your spiel. What's that? Oh, well, yeah, we always say Yes, that's what I'm talking damn, about. Damn, Let's go. They have an elevator speech too, man. <laughs> hey, listen, man. I love it. Let's do it. <laughs> but uh, we, we really, uh, really enjoy being here this with you great. all. This was great. This was a great uh, interaction. And like you said earlier, we have to do it again. We have to schedule yeah. and do it again and, and do a part two or part three, whatever. But... You know, um, you just out here chopping up good game with the family. Mm-hmm. That's what I enjoy. But I do want to say, too, as I'm doing my anthropological study with the Bitcoin mindset, mm-hmm. you two did exactly what I was talking about with that Bitcoin mindset profile. Mm-hmm. The way you sat and listened to the conversation. This is what you took. This is what you observe. This is mm-hmm. what you think. And more and more, we're going to start to see like, oh, yeah, now that she's saying we do that and this person does it and this person we talk to does it. And I think the community would get more and more, um, be able to observe more and more of this yeah. Bitcoin mindset. Yeah. Oh, man, this is be the change you want to see in the world. It Incredible. Is. Amazing. Oh, uh, I think, Simon, did we already hear from you? <laughs> Any final words before we go? No, no. I just, um, like I said, I love being here with you guys, man. Absolutely. We'd like to uh, have you on our show so we can, you know, kind of uh, do a deep dive into who you guys are and, 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 your, and your vision and, and how you see it going. So We are know, killers. We are killers. Yeah, you're gonna, <laughs> our channel is going to get flagged, man. Our channel is going to get flagged. <laughs> out to yeah. just kind of put that on their radar so that's really yeah. what we like to do as content cousins yeah if, okay. if, you know and when you guys get you know come on down to mexico city we want to you man. know i have to make that trip you know i've made yeah, this yeah, moods you know. now where i want to go and explore and things like that i'm yeah. totally yeah happy. yeah come on down yeah. come, come on, on down. down and we'll show you the great bitcoin community that they are building in mexico city lorena oh. bitcoin oh. is a friend of ours We'll take you to the meetups and stuff. She has a Bitcoin restaurant, nice. excellent food, great environment. You guys will really enjoy yourself. Yeah, and I know a couple mm-hmm. cats in the cartel, man. <laughs> We're there. Ah, no, no kidding. Listen, <laughs> I've been trying to move. They have a few bricks, okay? <laughs> I have a few bricks that I, I, I dropped <laughs> there when I was flying in from Africa. Online. Just Yeah, when I was flying from Africa, I just threw them out of the window. I said, I'll just drop them over there before we cross into U.S. <laughs> I need to, if you know some of them, let me know. I need to connect with those boys. We'll take y'all to the Bitcoin Embassy Bar, okay? <laughs> exactly. Right. Have a great time. So just let Amazing. us know. Incredible. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you found this informative. Um, 
and hopefully very educational or if not maybe you're a fair guy we hope you at least found it entertaining okay be sure to follow the simon family investments youtube channel and twitter of course follow us as well share the videos with your friend we are also on uh, x formerly known as twitter as stackfin and of course spotify as stack just roll through that one like it was nothing i'm getting better at this thing yes, sir. Incredible. until next time ladies and gentlemen brazen out double o say goodbye simon family <laughs> <laughs> they just smell <laughs> and, uh, incredible all righty